Try that again. Good morning. Good morning. That sounds better. I think that sounds better than the way Purdue played the other day. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. I know you've given me some of you are very kind, gave me some condolences. I'm just reminding everyone that's why the sermon is about disappointment, how to handle disappointment. So uh, my daughter and I are convinced it's just going to be like last year, a number 16 seed is going to knock them out in the first round, and that's going to be a shame. But it's been a great run. It's been a lot of fun. So welcome to Bristol Community Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lewis. Great to have you with us on this Sunday morning. If you take a look at your bulletins, there are several announcements there I'll have you take a look at. Um, the Easter Lily orders are now available, so you can, if you, envelopes are available at the registration desk. Um, there in the lobby. And here's our Holy Week services. Uh, we have an egg hunt Saturday at noon. Um, on Thursday, we're having a Holy Thursday communion service in the Family Life Center. So that's going to take place in the Family Life Center. And then on, on Good Friday, we're doing something different. We're having a, a Zoom Bible study at noon. And there's a link. You can let us know. And we'll send you the link to the Zoom message, uh, to the Zoom um, how you say it, I guess, to, to, to log in. So if you'd like to be able to join us, we invite you to do that. Um, via your computer in, in the comfort of your home, we'll have a Bible study on, on Good Friday. Our Easter services are the same uh, services, same schedule as we have every Sunday. There's other announcements in the bulletin. I do want to invite you, we have some invitation cards made up. And these are very similar to the ones that we have um, normally. But on the, on the cover of this one, it has the date of Easter. Now, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people who don't know when Easter is because it, it varies a lot, right? It changes every year. And so this is important. So if you'd like to pick up an invite card and invite someone, after, after the end of the service, I'll be up here to the front. You can come forward and uh, you can take a couple of cards home if you'd like to help us with that. I want to also just remind you, uh, you'll be hearing about what's called the HOPE Initiative. And so I want you to be, be in prayer about that. We've got some volunteers who are going to help us in some very important areas, and we're going to be, be able to pray for them in the future. And um, it's going to be about prayer. It's going to be about evangelism, about sharing God's, God's word with, with, with the community around us. Uh, the Tuesday morning Bible study uh, returns April 9th. The women on a mission meet uh, tomorrow, uh, or yes, tomorrow afternoon at, at 2 o'clock. Um, if you look in your bulletins on the right-hand side, there is a, um, a communication slip. If you would just tear that perforated area, and you can fill that out. There's some prayer requests on one side. Also, you can f fill, your, uh, fill out your, your attendance here. It's very helpful to us if you would do that. And there's also some decisions. You can check that out. And as, you, as we take the offering, um, you can place the, uh, the communication slip in the offering plate as it's being passed. All right, let us uh, pray together the, the, the uh, open road prayer. Let us, it's on the screen. Let's, let's pray this together. God, please break through and open doors to new hopes and possibilities for our church and in our own lives. And we will surrender and faithfully follow Christ into the open road adventure of your new and unknown future. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord Jesus, as we gather here today, Lord, we just want to praise you, for you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you for this opportunity to be your mission outpost to this community. So, Lord, I pray for the music today. I pray for the word that's going to be spoken today, all the elements of this service, that we might be able to leave here today knowing that you are present and that you are working in our lives. For all these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I was wondering if I see a sea of green this morning. I don't know if you did this when you were growing up, but uh, when I was growing up in school, if you didn't wear green, guess what happened? You got pitched. Yes, sir. I don't know if that applies here, but <laughs> let's stand and sing. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. 
Somebody, I mean, greet somebody. <laughs> right here, right here, right here. Good morning, good morning again, brother. Find your seats. Come thou almighty king. Come thou almighty king. Help us thy name to sing. Help us to praise. Father of glorious for all victorious. Come and reign. Yeah. 
Okay, let's pray. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit to inhabit our service this morning. We ask you to make a word, your word a lamp to guide us and a light unto our path. Father, let your word be a refreshing to our spirit. Father, as we reach out to you this morning, as our hearts seek you, let us feel the weight of your presence. Let us encounter your Holy Spirit dwelling in us, guiding us, and opening our hearts to your truth. We ask to keep your hand over the family of King Ken Lingofelter during their time of loss. Be near the family of Tess White, the sister of Loretta Wetzel, throughout their time of loss. Keep your hand over Dwayne Miller, who lost his father. Father, we ask that you heal their hearts and bring comfort to them during this time. Let them feel your love. Let them feel your care. Joshua 1.9 says, the Lord will be with you. Let God be the strength of our hearts. Father, I ask that you be with those who are brokenhearted. Your word says you are close to the brokenhearted, that you rescue those who are crushed in spirit. I ask that you bring peace wherever peace is needed. Father, we are confident that you know the things that are close to our hearts. We know that you love and care for us. Father, you know our needs, our concerns. Your word says that we are to cast all of our anxiety on you because you care for us. I ask you to bring comfort to those who are going through tough, uncertain times. You, Father, alone are our strong tower. You are the pillar that holds our life. You and you alone are our refuge, our strength, and ever-present help in our time of need. God, you are Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. Father, we ask for healing for those in our midst who are ill. We ask that you continue to be with Gene tomorrow as he's recovering at home from neck surgery. We pray for Ruth Zeems, who's currently in hospice care. Father, we pray for wellness and healing for members of our congregation and for those that they love and care for. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name as we pray the prayer Christ gave to us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sharing our Bible reading this morning is Jim Eagleson. Would you give him a Bristol Community Church welcome as he comes to read the Bible for us? This morning's Bible reading is from Exodus 15, verses 22 through 27, titled, The Waters of Marah and Elam. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, and if you pay attention, his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring 
on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jim. If you'll turn to your bulletins, there's a sermon outline. There'll be some Bible verses we'll be looking at together this morning. We all experience disappointment. I'm not just talking about college basketball. I'm talking about real life, right? We all experience disappointment. We are disappointed by things, uh, by events, but most often we are disappointed by people. Moses was an authority on how to deal with disappointing people. We're going to look at him this morning. If you are going to make it in life, you must learn how to deal with disappointment. Even when you commit your life to Christ, That does not disqualify you from the pain of disappointment. When you are disappointed in life, do not quit. Hang on, because often areas where you think you are most disappointed are the things that in a matter of days or a few miles down the road are going to turn around. Moses was an authority on how to deal with disappointment. No man put up with more complaining It was the favorite pastime of the Israelites. It became the sin that kept them out of the promised land. They were very quick to criticize their leader. Their philosophy was, when in doubt, criticize Moses. They questioned his motives, doubted his decisions, and challenged his leadership. The Israelites were always having a problem with water. First, there was too much water at the Red Sea. Then, there was not enough water. They they were in the desert. Then they came to bitter water. Exodus 15, verse 22 says this, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. This is no small problem. They have three million thirsty people and a million thirsty animals, and there is no water. Notice it says they traveled three days. What happened three days earlier? They had just come through the Red Sea. It was a great spiritual victory. They were slaves who found freedom, and Moses eventually negotiated with Pharaoh, who allowed the captives to lead. He, the, Pharaoh changed his mind, and his powerful army went after them. So you had the Egyptians on one side, and the Red Sea on the other and the Israelites in the middle, and what did God do? God parted the sea, and the Israelites crossed the sea on dry land. It was an incredible spiritual victory. Number one, disappointment occurs right after achievement. They are here, and they are wondering what is going wrong. How could this be? We saw God work in our lives in a mighty way, and now we have no provision for water. And when they finally found some water in a well called Marah, they could not drink it. Verse 23 says this, When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. God's character is revealed in the big crisis in life, but your character is revealed in the little crisis of life. God showed his power at the Red Sea, but at Mara, where the water was bitter, it showed what they were really like. And it said God led them there to test them. How many of you have been going through a test recently? Disappointments are tests. They are testing our character. They are testing what we are really like inside. Notice it does not say this about the Red Sea experience. At Marah, the Israelites failed the test. They complained. They griped. 
What does disappointment reveal about you? What, what is your, your Mara this morning? Your Mara is anything that is distasteful to you. It is that thing that once was sweet but has turned bitter. A job, a relationship, a problem. Great achievements in life are often followed by failure. Look at what Moses did. In verse 25, it says, Then Moses cried out to the Lord. The reality of disappointment means this. Number two, disappointment is often caused by a short memory. Disappointment is often caused by a short memory. Remember what happened three days earlier. It was the crossing of the Red Sea. The Israelites have a short memory. They had forgotten what God had done for them. Isn't that typical? Isn't that typical when we come to a problem, we forget about the things God has done for us in the past? Isn't it typical that when you're facing a difficulty right now, you think, God is not going to help? I am on my own? Yet we fail to remember how many times God has helped us in the past. It is amazing how quickly people forget. It is human nature. You know, what have you done for me lately? Verse 24 says this. So the people... Let's read this out loud together. It's on, your, on the screen. It's on your sermon outlines. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, What are we to drink? This leads to all sorts of disappointment. Children forget parents. Bosses forget employees. Spouses take each other for granted. You are going to do things for people in life, and they are going to forget that you did it, and you're going to be disappointed. What do you do? What do you do when disappointment occurs? Well, First thing is refuse to become bitter. Refuse to become bitter. Don't turn into the water at Mara. The Bible says in Romans 12, 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. When you retaliate, God says, okay, it is up to you. Either I get even or you can get even. You can either sell the score or I will settle the score. When you're disappointed with people, do not ever retaliate. Let me do it. God says, bless the people and refuse to become bitter. Moses did not say, you guys can forget it. You know, have fun finding your own way back to Egypt. I am going to the promised land. Well, what do you do when you're offended by people? Sometimes we are at our most creative when we are offended. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes I can be downright ingenious at ways at getting back at people. The Bible says, don't do that. Refuse to be bitter. Do not curse those who persecute you. When you retaliate, God stops acting on your behalf. It could be a neighbor who irritates you, a friend who lets you down or betrayed a confidence, refuse to become bitter. Bitterness never resolves the situation. It only makes things worse. Next, resist dwelling on it. Resist dwelling on it. In other words, do not rehearse it. Have you noticed that every time you review a hurt, it gets, it gets bigger? It gets blown out of proportion. Job 5.2 says this, Resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. It is extremely dangerous habit to rehearse a disappointment repeatedly. Resist dwelling on it. Ephesians 4.31 says this. Let's read this out loud together. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Next, Avoid deeping the pain with anger. Do not nurse a disappointment. Do not make it personal. Do not nurse it. Do not have a pity party. Do not allow it to make you negative. Avoid deeping the pain by getting angry. Anger is not always wrong. Sometimes it is an appropriate response. Jesus got angry. God gets angry. So anger is in itself not a sin. It is an emotion. There is healthy anger. And there is unhealthy anger. How do you handle it? 
Take a look at Ephesians 4, verses 26 to 27. Let's read this out loud together. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Something that is always wrong is when you hold on to anger because holding on to anger turns into resentment and resentment is always wrong. It always hurts you more than it hurts the person who disappoints you and makes you angry. Some of you have had a tough week, a tough month, and a tough life. You are, you are disappointed. You have had best, some bad experiences where you feel like you are a victim. Some of you are continuing to allow people from your past to hurt you in the present. That doesn't work. They can no longer hurt you unless you choose to hang on to the hurt. Job 18 verse 4 says this. Let's read this out loud. You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger, is the earth to be abandoned for your sake, or must the rocks be moved from their place? In other words, you can spend all day tearing out your hair, but it's not going to change a thing. It is human nature to say, I am pulling in and building a high wall around myself. I am not going to let anybody else hurt me. I am going to build walls. Never again will I allow anybody to hurt me. That is not living. That is just existing. Can you imagine if the Apostle Paul did this? He was disappointed by many people. Lots of folks all the time let him down, but he never gave up. Can you imagine Jesus doing this? Let's think this through. Imagine Jesus went back to heaven ahead of schedule and the angels see him and ask, what happened, Lord? Why are you here? Jesus replies, I am here because I had a bad experience. Someone really let me down and not everyone liked me. I was not appreciated and I was criticized. Trying to please everyone is asking to be hurt. You are going to be hurt. Just about the time you get crowd A, please, crowd B is upset with you. Once, you, once crowd B is excited and happy, crowd A gets upset with you. It is a never-ending cycle. You cannot do it. So what do you do? What do you do? You give it to God in prayer. That is what Moses did. He, he gave it to God. Let it go. The Bible says, then Moses cried out to the Lord. He did not post it on Facebook. He did not, did not give it a review on X. He, don't, he, did, he did not make a TikTok video. He did not try to tell everyone how he was mistreated. He did not call a lawyer about being passed over for promotion. He did not line up people on his side and build a case for himself. He, he went right to the Lord. Exodus 15, verse 25. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. What is your Mara this morning? What is, your, what is bitter in your life? What is distasteful, and you do not like it? It may be a relationship that has gone sour. It may be a physical Mara, an illness or an ailment. It may be an emotional Mara. It, it, it may be something at your job that just has, turned out the, it just has not turned out the way you thought it would. Give it to God. Pray about it. Say, okay, God, I am crying out to you. Telling other people does not do any good. I am going to tell you. When you do that in a sincere way, the water becomes fit to drink. In verse 27, the Bible tells us there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees at the oasis of Elam. God led them to Palm Springs. I mean, didn't that sound great? There was plenty of water for everyone. There was probably dates and things to eat. Elam was only about five miles from Mara. Question. How do you get from Mara to Elam? How do you get from the place of disappointment to the place of delight? How do you get from pain to paradise? The answer is, you just keep going. Keep moving ahead. 
Notice it says, then they came to Elam. It does not say God brought Elam to them. He didn't. They had to reach it by keeping on going in spite of their feelings. Sometimes someone will say to me, I am just so tired, I do not feel like praying. I do not feel like serving anymore. I do not feel like coming to church. I do not feel like giving. I do not feel like giving my life away. I don't feel like reading the Bible. What do you do when you do not feel like doing those things? You keep on reading the Bible. You keep on praying. You keep on giving. You keep on serving. You keep on doing the things that are the right things to do. Say, come, Holy Spirit, come. The Holy Spirit is the power of God to bring people from Mara into Elam. Some of you say, I got burned once and never again am I going to take a risk. I'm not going to let anybody hurt me. That is not living. That is existing. Disappointment is one of Satan's tools to overwhelm believers in thinking that the world would be a better place without them in it. Knowing Christ demands that we relinquish the control we pretend we have over our lives. We are called to complete the story of Christ by spreading the gospel. Faith does not just inform, it transforms. There's a story in John 12 that after Jesus raised his friend Lazarus back to life, some Greeks tracked down Jesus and the disciples. In verse 21, they made this declaration to Philip. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Standing among both Jews and Gentiles, Jesus declares his mission to the world. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus declares in verse 23. It's the presence of Jesus that transforms us. Experiencing Christ, knowing Christ, demands that we relinquish the control we pretend we have over our lives. Go from the beginning of the Bible to the end, and you will see over and over again the story of men and women who have this Holy Spirit fire burning in their bones, this fire seared and sealed upon their hearts. The world is a better place because Moses didn't say, I don't do water. Noah didn't say, I, I don't do arcs. Amos didn't say, I don't do speeches. David didn't say, I don't do giants. Peter didn't say, I don't do Gentiles. Mary didn't say, I don't do virgin births. John the baptizer didn't say, I don't do deserts. The apostle Paul didn't say, I don't do letters. Jesus didn't say, I don't do crosses. You don't say, I don't do. Instead, do what it is that God has laid on your heart to do. Even when it seems uncertain. Even when it seems overwhelming. Even when you are in the throes of disappointment. Do not give up. It is interesting that God's solution to a bitter experience was a piece of wood. Why, why did God choose it? I don't know. It was a miracle. But God said to Moses, here is a piece of wood. Throw it in the well. And it will turn the bitter water sweet. So, mostly, so Moses did it simply as an act of obedience. That piece of wood was used to turn a bitter experience into a sweet one. Approximately 2,000 years later, God used another piece of wood called the cross to turn your bitter experiences into sweet ones. When Jesus Christ hung on that cross, he was saying, I am taking all the sin of this world. I'm doing this for you. You talk about a victim, sinless, no reason, yet he took it all unto himself 
so you and I could be set free. That's the good news. That is the gospel. All sorts of people will disappoint you in your life. Why? Because people are imperfect. But there is one person who will never disappoint you. Jesus Christ. He says, the truth will set you free. Pray with me. Whatever is causing hurt, resentment, and bitterness in your life, would you allow Jesus Christ to heal it? You need to deal with it today. You need to remember these principles from Mara. You are ready to give up. Do not give up. Instead, give it to God. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome it. Remember, Elam is just a few miles away. Pray this simple prayer with me this morning. This is totally up to you. You you could be tuning me out right now. You, You could be thinking about something else, distracted about the next thing you are about to do. Just please tune in for just a moment. Say this, Jesus Christ, help me to not give up. Help me to not get stuck in the bitter experience, but to push ahead until I come to Elam. Many times we do not want to push ahead because we are afraid. Say this, Lord, help me with my fears. Lord, I want to claim the verse that says, all things work together for good. I am not expecting any instant overnight miracles but I need your power to press ahead until I get to Elam. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May it encourage us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I'll invite our ushers to come forward for our offering. I'm going to offer a prayer as they prepare to collect our tithes and offerings. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can gather here in freedom and be able to experience you in this place. Lord, I pray your blessing upon these tithes and offerings, that we might be faithful to the, to the calling you've given us, that we might be, continue to be a, a sign of hope to this community, that we might be able to do your work in this place to make disciples of Jesus Christ. For all these things, Lord, we, we thank you, and we pray for these tithes and offerings to do the work that we need to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus.
is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he brought me and brought me with his redeeming blood he loved me the benediction today, I invite you just to open up your hands like this and receive this benediction. And I just encourage you, if you, if you, if you need prayer, if this message touched something, I'll be right here at the front pew. If you'd like to pick up a few of these invitation cards for Easter, they'll be right here on the rail next to me. Let's, let's do this today, together. All my gracious God, Lord Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for all you did for us on the cross and, and for your gift of grace. Help us, Lord, to do your work in this place. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.